This is the story of what is happening to the American small town in wartime. The town is being invaded. The invaders are not enemies, but friends. Americans, people from the farms, the mountains, the faraway cities and villages. They pour into the town, wash through its streets and into its houses and churches and meeting places. The town is flooded and overwhelmed. It was meant to be a living space for five to 10,000 people. 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 people roll into it, double up in its houses, camp on its outskirts. The new people have come here to work in the shipyards, in the machine shops, and small factories. They work hard under the 90 degree sun, in the electric oven heat of the steel bulkheads, the heavy work and the small, exacting, precise work. Then they come off the ship, a friendly, good-natured army, but an army almost without organization. The small community is overwhelmed. Every power plant, pumping station, and grocery store pushed to the limit. They stand in line at the post office, sending money home to the cities and the hill farms. They line up with their laundry. In three weeks, they may get it back. Lunch counters jammed up people being turned away from the diners. They swim on schedule. The lifeguards herd them out. Working in shifts and swimming in shifts. Some new housing has been put up. It's comfortable enough, but the people haven't been able to get together yet. They live in their separate cells. People need other people. They need a get-together. A little fun, a little swapping of talk and goodwill. They want to feel that they belong. The new community, the community of townspeople and new people, has not yet been built. The people must build it themselves, all the people. They jam into the juke joints play pool when they'd rather be playing baseball. One shift and then another shift, with nothing much in between. Sometimes it gets to be too much. They decide to try another town. This is another town a town where the people are doing something about it. The town is Sylacauga, Alabama. This town has the same problem. It had the same boredom and lassitude. People were always thinking about getting out of it. Now they've changed their minds. They're doing something about it. They're getting together. The mayor, the city manager, the civic leaders, army officers from the nearby posts, people from the plant, a man from the Division of Recreation of the United States Federal Security Agency. He's seen this problem before. He knows how to help people get it in hand, but the people must do it themselves. They are doing it. They hunt up rooms and boarding places for the newcomers. They hold a get-together at the church. The local police help out as guides and advisors. The women's clubs begin to organize things. They clean up the town pool. tennis, Red Cross work and the rest. Sports are good for people and the Red Cross work is essential. But the main thing is to get people together, cooperating with each other, 
working together, playing together. A new community is being born. Americans have been making new communities for 300 years and dancing in these communities. Quadrilles under the colonial candles of Williamsburg, dusty hoedowns in the new pioneer towns of Kentucky, square dances in the middle of the Kansas cornfields, miners romping together in the California gold towns. Recreation hall games instead of shooting matches. Nutrition programs instead of recipe swapping. But the impulse is the same. The tradition is the same. Storytelling and play acting and music. The Negro Boys and Girls Band. They hit it on the beat and take it on down. The children dancing and speaking pieces. mothers and fathers looking on. They remember the bond dances too. Davy Crockett and Abe Lincoln kicked their heels in these dances. The Americans haven't forgotten how. Pop goes the weasel and turkey wing and the soldiers reel. One community did this, one town full of people who belonged there and people who wanted to belong made a new community. Other towns are doing it everywhere in America. Americans finding out how to get together all over again, a good thing in wartime and a good thing afterwards. Now they have a life in common. Now they have something to look forward to. Nobody needs to be walled off or bored or lonely. They go back to work. Every man on the shift is a neighbor and a friend. Every man on the shift knows that he belongs.